Hi Neil, I'm just going to make a video here of your uh, VCF board. I figured it would be a lot easier to make a video than try to explain some of this through email. Um, what I found is, originally your symptoms were you had no audio output for the VCF circuit. And that was your symptoms. But what I found out after doing some measurements and things, I actually found out that you had your audio output. Your audio out was not the issue. What the problem was is your actual VCF circuit was dead. And uh, what happened is, I'm going to go to the schematic so I can show you this, and I'll come back to this boarding and show you what I've done. Um, is what I found out in my research is that somebody had replaced this E402 with two transistors. And basically, this E402, and this is actually your VCF ladder filter here, the Moog ladder filter. Um, but he balances each branch of this, uh, of this transistor network. And some evidently he had went bad in your board at some point, and somebody had tried to replace him with two transistors, which evidently did not work too well because I think it pulled too much current through all your uh, ladders and everything like that in this filter. And what it also did, and this is what your primary issue was, was that once I replaced your EFO2, I got looking, and I noticed that this resistor here, R158, had opened up. Which this is in a resistor network. This is one of those little resistor networks, which I'm going to show you when I go back to the board. But it's N6, which is a little network. And he had opened up. He was reading nothing. I was reading nothing from pins 3 to 4 in the network. So that was one of your issues. And your other issue is, right here off your uh, current source and uh, current source for your um, VCL, you have another branch right here which is R159 pins 9 and 10 which is 7k resistor which had also opened up so this filter was just sitting here doing nothing I mean it was just literally dead and uh, so what I did is I had to do this a little weird because these networks are not very easy to get and so I fixed you up by doing this right here which I'll go back to the polymog and show you um, what I did is I this is your resistor network here, this little green network. What it is, I cut pins 3 and 4 off of it and installed a 1K resistor beside of it. And uh, it seems to be working very well. And then what I did for the 9 and 10 pins is I actually left them together, but I shorted them. with a, I soldered the two legs together. And then what I did is I went over here and I changed this resistor right here that was originally at the uh, leg of this transistor. And originally what you had, you had like a 5.6K here, and then that was a 7K. So what I did, I just, then they were in series. So I installed a 12K resistor. And basically it takes the place of both of those resistors. And it's a 2 watt resistor, so it can handle a little more current. And uh, so basically that took care of that problem. And I also went on to just replace all your uh, ladders, your transistor ladders and uh, replace the CA3046 related that circuit and I installed an actual E402 uh, in-channel JFET which is a, a new old stock part. So I've got this thing set back up to original uh, spec with some exceptions to make it work because like I said these little uh, resistor networks are not easy to get. But anyways as you can hear I've still got a few issues on this board um, primarily with your uh, your actual envelope generator or contour generator for your VCL. It's trying to work, but it's just not working correctly. Um, but as you can hear, I'm on VCL out, and we'll set up a little longer sustain time. As you can hear, You can hear your filter is actually working right. The keyboard uh, amount works. And the glide circuit seems to be working. As you can hear. And then actually your modulations work. We'll open this filter up. And your sample and hold works. And 
And I haven't calibrated this or anything yet, so it's still kind of raw. But also, if I go here to your envelope generator, you can hear it'll try to work. So you can hear it just changes the. Uh, it's just not working right though, so I'm going to work on that. But besides that, I about got everything fixed. And the only other thing I did notice was in your audio circuit, you do have one issue because the modes don't work. So as you can hear, it's dead in the mode output, um, which is probably a, another resistor network. So I might have to do the same thing I did to your VCL circuit. But um, anyways, Neil, I just thought I'd give you an update here and kind of show you exactly um, what's going on and what I've done. And uh, also, I went on and replaced your lm 3580 ns You had some of those dead. And like I say in every video, it's, it goes without saying that every polymog I've ever worked on has bad 3580Ns or they go bad during test. So I just go in and put new ones in it, I socket them, and I've got everything uh, fixed up very nice for you. As you can see, there's an example there. But uh, I put high grade uh, sockets in there for you for the uh, uh, LM3580Ns. And uh, so you're you're going to be in business once I get it all fixed up for you. What, I went on and recalped um, all the electrolytic capacitors as well as the tantalum caps I always talk about. I put in these nice new new parts, still using tantalums. And uh, there's a reason behind that. I know a lot of people replace these with electrolytics, which I mean they work, but these seem to be a little more a little more stable. And since what you want to do is primarily catch that voltage on turn on, that's really all these things care about. So when you when you initially hit power switch on this thing, these catch that spike and protect your chips and everything from from getting a little spike on them, damaging them. Um, but anyways guys, uh, and Neil, I just thought I'd take a minute and show you that to you. And uh, we'll have more updates for you soon. Take care.